just to um, explain who I am, I'm the UK Sales Director for Abacus. Um, it's my second time round here. Um, I did join Abacus at the very start, back in 1998, 99. Uh, there for a few years and then badly went up and set, helped set up a, a competitor. Um, was there for a few years and then uh, I went on the agency side, the even darker side. Um, but um, I'm back now and um, it's great to, to be back at a, a very exciting business and um, one that's changed quite a lot certainly since my time. Um, what I want to, obviously, what I've got the honour of trying to succinctly, which is a, quite a, a job for me in the next half hour, um, pull out some of the key uh, findings from the report. Obviously, you've all found a copy of it. As you can see, it's quite a big report. It's about 52 pages, I think. So there's a lot of information in there, which I'm sure you'll be able to read and, and, and disseminate um, in your own time. But what we're trying to do here is, is pick out some of the key, key trends that have come out um, and what that might mean and some conjecture around that. Um, what we'd like to do is, in terms of questions and things that come out, as the day goes on, obviously, once you've had time to digest, come and speak to myself, Lara, any of your account directors, account managers, or any of our, our, our lovely analysts who are here today in force. So um, they're the guys who actually put the hard work in and, put and produce this report. Um, but um, what we'll do, we'll go through and, and, um, and give you a, an overview on, uh, on what it's all about. Just put that in there. Okay, so as, um, as Laura pointed out, it, a big thanks to everybody in here and all the other members who couldn't make it. Um, we couldn't do this report without your data. Um, we can put, put it together in terms, of, in terms of the stats, but without the, the richness of the data that goes in to the Alliance, we wouldn't have an annual trends report. So we, um, we really thank everybody for that, and I think this is the fifth year. Um, which, is, which is quite a thing and every year, certainly when I was coming to this being invited as a client, I found it a very good event and um, it's a challenge to make it more and more um, compelling and I think we've done that this year. So what does the report contain? Uh, lots of information but what we'll um, try and cover uh, briefly um, this morning um, are what those revenue trends were importantly between 2013 and 2014. So you can look at your individual categories and see how, you've, how the categories performed and obviously you know individually how your businesses have, have performed against that. We're going to look at five main categories being clothing, gardening, gifts, gadgets, generalist retail um, and home interiors. Um, what you'll find in the report is there are some subsectors which I'll go into um, but we won't cover that in this particular part of the day. Um, we've also got some um, interviews from some uh, of our members and some industry leaders, which add a bit of context to what we found, which is um, quite interesting. And there's much fuller uh, interviews in there. Um, we've also um, looking at the general economic state of the UK and how retail compares to that. Um, and we're doing that in association with Step Solutions who report, um, produce a fantastic report called Consumer Indicators. So we'll go through a bit about that. Um, we've also got some fantastic research from the Royal Mail Market Reach, um, which is called The Private Life of Mail. Um, so I'll try and explain that briefly, but essentially it's how how the catalogue and how um, the mail really affects all the other channels and really does um, give a lasting impression and helps that whole multi-channel effect. And finally, um, we've got some uh, digital trends um, for this year by e-consultancy that um, is research they've done in conjunction with Adobe, which we certainly find fantastic. Um, so there's a lot to cover. There's a huge amount in the report, which I'm sure you'll read at your leisure, but we'll try and uh, come up with some of the key points um, now. So I suppose the first question is, why, why do this? Why bother, to be honest? Why bother spending a lot of time putting these reports together? And how does that affect? And what really benefits yourselves as retailers? Um, well, the truth is, there's been a huge change in retail spending patterns last year, the year before, and that will continue to happen. So the more we know about why that's happening, and why that's happening is an effect of things that are essentially out of our control, the more and, and the better you can plan and really understand how that affects your business. Um, the three quotes here, which will, um, in terms of those effects, we'll talk about as, as we go along. But essentially, as you can see, Retail Week um, are still talking, and this was at the end of last year, about how the recession has caused big changes in the marketplace um, in terms of consumer spending. And the reality is there, um, it's all about price. It's still there. 
it's very competitive. So it's a huge challenge for every retailer out there to try and keep those prices, prices up, keep those average order values up whilst you're competing in that market space. So that's a huge challenge that is still there and will always, is always going to be there. Um, Black Friday promotions, um, Andy Street at John Lewis um, you know, is quoted here as saying how that's had a huge effect in terms of the restructuring of the business and how sh Christmas shopping patterns have been changed probably forever by that. Obviously, that was an effect that happened in the US and has come to the UK. So it's there. It's evident in the report as we go along. It's something everybody here needs to be aware of and needs to start thinking about seriously uh, for their businesses. And finally, um, the Luxury Institute, um, which is a, uh, uh, an institute we, we work closely with, um, they're still saying that um, they believe th that 50% of luxury brands out there are still getting their personalization wrong and their targeting wrong for their, for their customer groups, um, which obviously you know, is, is a huge issue because, as we know, we're all trying to be as personalized as we can. And that, again, with a competitive marketplace, that's got to be right. So there's lots of things out there, and, and, and consumers these days, they, they feel that they believe personalization is, the, is what they expect. And if we're not delivering that, then you know, there, there's issues, and that's going to have a knock-on effect for all your businesses. So going on to the retail sales, what we've looked at here is um, an overview of um, the last sort of four years or so by quarter. Um, and as you can see, the, the, it's quite a busy graph, but essentially the main and the most important area for us in here is this blue line. The nice one that goes from an analyst point of view in the right direction, um, that's the direct channel. That's outside, you know, with household food, clothing. These are the non-store, the direct channel that we're all in. And the growth in that is exponential. Um, and that's continued in 2014, hit a high. So that's great news for everybody. We should all be very excited about that. Um, but with that comes challenges and even more expectation on the back of those, those trends that we, um, we just saw. In terms of giving you um, a view on the, on the economy, as, as I mentioned, with some research with cons um, the Consumer Indicators Report, um, this is essentially come from statistics based from the Office of uh, National Statistics, so it's government-led data. And this is really where we were um, at 2014. So GDP growth was up 3%, but excitingly and interestingly, retail outperformed that at 4.1%. So again, that backs up what we've seen previously. Um, the retail share of GDP was up 5.7%, which is, again, great and really bolters. And year on year, about 1% year on year in terms of GDP. Total resale sales were just under £341 billion. Again, a great year-on-year in -year increase, or so positive. And importantly for where we are, um, the non-store re non retail sector, so whether it's catalogue online, market trading, um, that's worth about £26.7 uh, billion in 2014, an increase of a massive 13.7% in 2013. So, you know, huge growth um, over 2014. Um, and really, you know, really exciting for everybody in this room, and we'll see how that's affected each of the sectors. But as you can see, quite a, a buoyant economy. I think we all realised that last year that it's come, we're really well and truly coming out of recession. Um, but there are challenges with, that come with that, and we need to make sure that we're we're set for that. So, how's the report put together? Um, for those of you who worked with us a while, you'd probably be familiar with the categories that we we work in. Um, there's a number of them um, in terms of subsets, but what we're looking at, um, particularly in this report and certainly, certainly this morning, are clothing, gardening, generous retail, gifts, gadgets, entertainment, home, and, home interiors and household. Um, in the report, as you go through it, you'll see that we've actually pulled out some other sort of subcategories, if you like, and that's very much in the clothing sector where we've put together um, contemporary and high end as an individual report. Um, mature and also uh, mid-market. The reason for that is obviously clothing is a huge sector um, so that we have enough data to actually pull those out separately um, and I know there's obviously quite a few of you from clothing in the room so you, you, that will affect depending on the, uh, the area that you're in. Um, and gener generalist retail is what obviously multi-products, um, what were traditionally maybe the big book um, multi-brands um, clients that uh, we deal with. Um, just as a caveat to that, to understand that in order to qualify 
for your data and for any, all the other members' data to go in here. Um, we, you had to be trading through 2013, 2014, and we had to have all the transactional data up till the end of last year, um, which is um, you know, very important when we're benchmarking and looking at those growths. So, going on to the graphs and how to read them, you'll see in there there's a lot of graphs. Um, and what I want to do is spend a little bit of time to explain how, this, um, how you read this. As you can see, you've got a bar graph on the, on the bottom. Um, essentially what that is, the, um, the grey is um, total revenue in that month for 2013. And the red is total revenue in that month for 2014 across. This is across the whole um, home shopping. And we'll, the, the, you'll see these same graphs individually for each of the categories. Um, the other graph on there is looking at mailing uh, volumes and how they relate. And we got those mailing volumes from Ubiquity, which pretty much regarded as the best source to understand what's out there and, and who's mailing and the volumes, um, whether that's from a customer um, perspective or from a recruitment perspective. Um, in terms of how we've, how we've indexed that, we've then totaled up the total revenue across the 24, across those two years, divided it by 24, and we've created an index of 100. And that gives the average spend in those months across that time period. So what we can then see is start benchmarking where's average spend above and, be, um, above and below that across that period, and also where are the spikes. So hopefully that makes that slightly more clear. But obviously, as we go along, the day goes along, any questions, let us know. But essentially, um, the good news is you know, it's a very, very healthy picture. Um, as you can probably notice straight away, um, in 2014, the revenue is up every single month, which is fantastic. So it re-emphasizes those growth figures that we, um, we talked about just before. Um, in terms of total sales across that home, the home shopping sector, year on year, it's 12% across as, as a market in total. So again, very strong growth, um, which is reflected in, in, those, in those figures. Um, in terms of average order value, which is another key thing that we look at and we've looked at for each sector, um, that was up very marginally, um, up about 1.1%. Um, so, you know, relatively flat, but, you know, still up. Um, if we go onto this page, it goes, goes up from 49, point, uh, sorry, 49 pounds just over to uh, 49 pound 58. So, again, going the right direction. Actually, when you think about it, as we mentioned earlier, you know, there's a huge amount of pressure on price, and there continues to be. To actually have all average order value in relative terms up is actually quite an achievement. So, again, all good. Um, interestingly, mailing volumes were down year on year, about 8%. So it's not, so not huge, but they were down um, year on year. And I think that's a reflection on, obviously, other channels being used and getting the right mix, which is obviously important, and finding that mix. Um, and certainly in terms of, of, of conjecture as to how, with mailing volumes being down and um, you know, uh, revenues going up, um, looking at when we were putting the report together, it's the amount of individual transactions has gone up. Um, so actually, you can deduce from that that actually in terms of cross-sell, in terms of retention, that's getting a lot better. Everybody's getting a lot better at that because we're getting more out of customers. So if we move on, um, and we're going to the subsectors now, um, we're going into uh, clothing, um, which is a, obviously a huge sector, um, and we have many of you in the room, I can see. Um, this did very well last year. Um, there was 11.6% revenue growth last year in clothing. As you can see, um, every single month there was growth, um, which, is, which is great. In, what we did see that is in Q2, which we're looking sort of April to, to June, in, in certainly in our, in, in our world, um, that was the strongest quarter for fashion in terms of growth. Revenue growth went up 15.9%. Um, so a very strong um, growth year on year in that, um, in that quarter. Um, in terms of other areas, um, average, average order value decreased slightly, not much, 0.5%. Again, push on prices will have an, we'll be having an effect on that. But in relative terms, fashion and sort of clothing's done very well to actually keep prices um, relatively flat. Um, 
One thing we did see, and sorry, I'll just go back slightly, was that if you see um, towards the ends from September to October, traditionally um, that period's obviously huge for clothing in terms of winter, winter stock. But if you can see the mailing volumes are very high in September, but revenues really didn't get crazy until November where there was a huge peak and a huge growth um, in November compared to year on year. Um, looking back at last year and speaking to a few of the retailers, it was a very warm autumn. So actually it didn't really start getting really cold until November. So people who were putting off buying big ticket or more expensive winter items, winter coats, whatever that may be. So that would explain um, potentially that peak, which is different year on year, because if you look at mailing volumes on the lines, mailing volumes are actually significantly down year on year in November. So ironically, less volume, more, and last year, the year before, there was more volume mailed and less revenue. So um, again, hard to account for, but these seas a seasonal effect in terms of weather really had a big, big impact there. Um, and as we said, low volumes mailed, but the pattern changed in terms of uh, the weather. Um, we got an interview from one of, one of our, um, our members, um, Victoria Stapleton, who owns and is the founder of Brora. Um, and as you can see there um, in her interview, which is much extended in the pack you have, um, she says, our customer associates, associates us more readily with the winter months. So a mild autumn is not what we are after, and it did affect sales. Of course, we made this up in, with a great Christmas in January when the temperatures were perfectly frosty. So again, clothing is really at the mercy of... Of, um, of the seasons and the weather. So again, there's not necessarily a lot we can do about that, but to be mindful that that can have, a, have an effect with, for you. Okay, moving on to gardening. Um, as we can see here in terms of gardening, again, the flow of, of mailings, um, as you can see in the line graphs, were very similar year on year. Um, again, volume's slightly down. Um, but what we do see here is quite a peak towards the end of the year, in October and November especially, um, which, you know, year on year were the biggest growth months um, from 2013. Um, we were looking into this and thinking, why, why could this potentially be the case? Well, again, similarly as we were talking about in clothing, again, weather affects gardening. We, we know that, but to actually put this around figures is, is interesting. Um, it was a particularly warm autumn. So the feeling is that um, as people enjoy their gardens more, they got more out of their gardens uh, through the course of late summer, autumn, towards the end of the year, there was more uh, potential for investment in terms of um, uh, the, the consumer uh, buying later in the year because they just felt that you know, more investment in the garden, they're getting more out of it because of the effect that that warm autumn had had. Um, maybe other effects as well, but you know, that certainly was something that a few of our members felt might be having an impact. Um, so as mentioned, the growth actually in October and November year on year was huge. 18% in October year on year, November 17, just over 17%. Um, in terms of gardening as a whole, um, it was a pretty flat year, yeah, minus 2%, you know, it's neither here nor there really, but there wasn't huge growth um, in gardening um, last year. Um, but the good news was um, towards the end of the year that really made up the figures and um, hopefully this year will be a, a, a growth year in terms of revenue for the sector. Um, the good news was, however, gardening um, increased their average order value, um, which was quite, again, quite a challenge in, a, in, the, in the environment we're in. So that's a real big plus for gardening to actually br br bring those average order values up. And again, that might have an effect of that feel good factor after the warm um, autumn. Um, Okay, so moving on to gifts and gadgets. Um, as those of you in the room who are in this sector, you know it's massively loaded towards the end of the year, so there's a lot of pressure for the gifts and gadgets um, marketeers out there to actually make their money. I think in the, uh, in the back end of the year, I think about 40%, 45% on average of revenues come in at that time. So as you can see, there's huge peaks, huge peaks there. Um, in terms of the sector and this category, it was... Um, the growth went up by 0.3%, so again, relatively flat, but um, not too bad um, in 2014. Um, particularly strong, as it's very evident on this graph, um, in um, November and December. November, um, the growth was 10.7% year on year, and December, 2.4%. Um, 
the feeling here is this has had this uh, this sector specifically, or more than, than others, has a huge impact on the the Black um, Black Friday, Cyber Monday um, effects that we've seen in the last couple of years. Um, big ticket items, especially, would fall into this: your big TVs, your big um, stereo systems, and so forth. So that's really affecting this sector. So it's a challenge. Um, for all of you who are, who are in this particular category to actually um, logistically work around that. Um, in terms of average order value, um, again, that fell 1.5%, um, but again, that's probably a knock-on effect to the fact that there is discounting um, in those two events of, of, uh, of Black Friday and, and Cyber Monday, so it's very hard to keep average order value up at that point at that time of year. However, because of the volume that's been traded, revenues um, are slightly up. So, you know, it's, it's got pluses and minuses there, but again, there was still growth, growth especially in those two months. Um, and there was a decrease in mailing volumes across the year of 3.1%. So again, not massive in that particular sector, but again, that's the use of, of the other channels um, and getting that mix right. Another uh, quote here from one of our interviewees, Georgie Coleridge Cole. Um, she's the founder of Sheerlux. Some of you may or may not have come across Sheerlux. They deal with a lot of luxury brands. Um, and um, she's quoted as saying, Black Friday is what now well and truly established. It's not just a brand's retail calendar, but in the customer's calendar too. So consumers now know that's going to happen. They expect it, and they expect big discounts, and they expect you to be ready for it. So, you know, it's here to stay, and it's not going away. Generalist retail. Um, it's safe to say generalist retail um, had a fantastic year last year based on our, um, our research. Um, revenues <coughs> were up hugely. The growth year on year was 19.6% in this sector, um, which is in any, in any year fantastic. Um, it's a sector that has grown year on year um, for the last four or five years. So it's nothing new, but it's certainly the biggest growth um, out of any of the categories, and certainly for, for, for that sector or that category alone, it's, it's the biggest. Um, there are, again, probably many reasons for that, but again, Black Friday, Cyber Monday is having a huge effect. You can see in revenues there, very, very, very strong um, Q3, um, and that's continued. Um, mailing volumes, interestingly, um, are down, but um, in terms of the promotional activity there, there's, there's a huge amount going on there. One of the um, other things that was quite evident was that average order value grew as well. So not only are they pushing revenues up and really getting the most out of, out of customers, getting average order value up is quite a, a significant uh, achievement as well. And to get that up by 3.1% is, um, is, uh, is a big jump year on year. Um, Looking at why we think that's happened, um, as well as the external influences we talked about, actually, um, what we see certainly when dealing with, with um, uh, some of you in this sector, and it's evident in the sector as a whole, is there's a huge amount of investment, a huge amount of time and resource goes into um, customer insight, analytics, and really, really understanding the customer, understanding the cross-sell between the brands and getting the most out of them. And I think certainly from the work that we do and, and what we see with some of our, um, our clients, that's, that's a big area that's really pushing that growth. So a, a very, very uh, strong, strong year for generalist retail. Uh, Rosie Freshwater is MD of Leapfrog, who deal with a number of, um, of brands. Um, she's quoted as saying, again, coming from her interview, another move made by many retailers was the realisation of the importance of combining data and insight to actually understand who customers are. Um, she's seen that with um, a lot of the, uh, the larger brands that she, they work with, and um, certainly that's something we've seen, so all good in that category. Um, and then finally, home interiors and, and household goods. Again, a very busy graph, a lot going on here, but essentially a, a, good, a good strong um, a year for this sector. In terms of growth, um, the growth was 15.1% year on year in the home interiors and household goods. So again, a very, very year on year, much, much bigger growth than they've seen previously. Um, again, there was growth in all months, as you can see, except actually um, in December, 
that was the one, uh, one blip there. That was down about 6%. Um, but again, that could be explained by the huge leap in, um, in November. And similarly, January, that's a big, big time for um, home interiors selling big ticket items. So, you know, probably not a, a huge, uh, huge um, difference in terms of December there. Um, in terms of other key things, that higher average order value in January, um, that was up 12% as an average order value. Um, again, really the big push, what we saw is a lot of our home interiors and household good clients, they really pushed sales and really, really got that right last year. So again, that's reflected in that average order value being significantly higher. Um, but again, sales sort of pushes that in terms of people spending. Um, the higher ticket items are spent at that time of year, so again, you know, that'll push up average order value. There was a, sm um, a small decline um, in AOV across the year by 0.4%, but, you know, nothing to be um, worried about particularly there. Um, and actually, interestingly, in this sector, um, compared to the others where we've seen mailing volumes go down, um, mailing volumes went up in the home interiors and household goods uh, category um, last year by 3.8%. And, and interestingly, in Q3, 20.3%, so that could have had an effect in the, uh, the latter half of the year where we saw those big spikes. So a lot of activity going on um, in this area and um, in this category, and, and again, a lot of strong growth. Um, Katie, who some of you may know, who's head of marketing for Feather and Black, who are really in that, in that space, um, she's quoted in, in her interview saying, we increased our investment in cold list mailings on the back of positive results in the prior year. Um, direct mail continues to be an important part of the marketing mix for us. So for this category, it's, it's, it's there. It's still important. Yeah, Catalogue is still hugely important with the other categories. It's just slightly down, you know, giving way to some of the other, other channels as well. Um, but um, it's still there and specifically uh, there for this, for this category. So, oh, I went too quick. So what we did, a bit of, bit of fun, just summarising that. We thought we'd do a little bit of a championship league table for 2014, see where we sat. Um, it's probably no great surprise to see the old generous retail Unfortunately, they're the Chelsea. It begs, even though I'm a Liverpool fan, it puts me in shame. But yeah, they're the Chelsea for this year. 19.6%, um, they're top of there. Um, unfortunately, gardening, it's not bad, you know. Actually, not, not, not bad, only 0.2% down. But against the other categories, that was uh, fared, fared probably worse last year. Um, but as you can see, in general, a really great year for retail across the board. And then in AOV, Actually, gardening have made a dramatic uh, rise up the table. So they're the runners up. So it's not all bad there. Um, again, a very challenging area to get that, make sure your average order value is at least stable, if not growing. But overall, um, you know, it was really good stuff going on there. But it has to be said, generous retail was uh, top of the pile last year. So um, the other categories need to, need to catch up a little bit. Um, but all good, you know, very, very positive, as I'm sure you can see from all the, the whole of retail sector. And it's very exciting from our point of view to be working with some you know, really, really exciting businesses and, and really help grow in all, in all areas. Going on from that, we wanted to mention, so as I say, that's really a, that's a very brief summary. Uh, there's lots in there. Ask loads of questions afterwards, um, but that gives you a flavor of those categories and what's been going on. Um, what we do do, and some, I know we work with quite a few of you on this, we can do more bespoke reporting as well. So whereas the report you have there is you know, by category and really looks month on month, we can actually do week by week reports, which are far more bespoke in terms of your specific sector. They're called market insight reports. Um, I'm not going to read this verbatim, but you can see on there there's a number of different um, areas we can look at. We can look at market share, we can look at seasonality, we can look at merchandise category. So there's a lot of very brand specific and, and very um, category specific um, stuff we can do for you. If it's something you think, do you know what, we need to mine a bit further into, into what we're doing. Um, and we have a lot of our, uh, our lovely analysts here today to sort of talk to you about that. Okay, um, and then moving on briefly, um, in, the, in your pack you'll see a load of research from um, the Royal Mail. Um, I've just pulled out one part of this, they've called it the private life of mail, and really what it's doing and, and what it's trying to keep top of your mind is that catalogue does drive, a mail piece coming through the door drives very much your online channel, 
Um, people like to receive it, like to look at it, but they might be then pushed on to online to do that. So your, your online, your offline has to be totally at one with each other because that, the, the mailings really, really push that. Some of the key stats we pulled out here, 92% um, um, of people are driven online um, by digital activity. 87% um, um, sorry, are driven online or onto some sort of digital activity from receiving a mail piece. 87% are influenced to make an online purchase by re receiving a catalogue. 86% um, feel they're connected with the business, which is quite important. You know, it's all about personalisation. You're trying to create that one-to-one -one experience. Um, the feeling was with this research that um, consumers felt when they got a catalogue, when it was a bit more personalised, they felt that connection with the, with the brand and the company. They might want to then transact online, but that's really where they get that personalisation. So you all need to keep that top of mind. 54% um, interestingly were engaged in social media as a result of getting the catalogue. So we're all in that space, we're all trying to make that work. It's very important to make sure that you're always promoting that. And 43% were um, led to download something as a direct result of getting the catalogue. So there's lots in there, but really what you've just got to remember is the catalogue drives all of that and it helps with that. The less, the less catalogues going through the door, the less you'll be able to really push that online experience. As I mentioned, we also, um, there's a lot of research in there as well um, in terms of digital trends, which um, the e-consultancy did with in, in conjunction with Adobe. It's really interesting stuff, and there's a lot more stats in there and, uh, than we've got up here. But these are three of the sort of key things that we've pulled out, which you need to keep top of mind. Um, that only 20% of responders think digital still sits separately from other act marketing activities, very much what I've just been talking about. You know, to have digital and offline working separately is crazy. You have to, that has to be Marriott because the consumer expects that. They don't expect you to be working separately. So if you are, you, you need to join, join that up. Content marketing customer experience in 2014 were the most exciting opportunities. Again, this is really all back to creating that personalization and making sure the customer really is, is happy and enjoying your brand and enjoying what you have to say. And targeting and personalization and concept, content optimization are key priorities for this year. Um, you know, how do you personalize? How do we get better at it? How do we target? And how do we make content relevant? You're going to hear actually um, this morning more about that, but that's a hugely important area that you need to be focusing on. So, in summary, finally, um, what were the key findings? There are many findings in there, but the key ones we've, we've pulled out from what you've seen are sales in home shopping and, and the general retail market up 12%, so that's great. You know, it's a very strong, very strong 2014, and certainly what we've seen the first four months of this year is that's continuing, so all good. Um, there's below average growth in September and October, probably due to an effect partly with the weather um, and how that affected some of the big categories um, and also people ex with expectations of, um, of what goes on in November with um, Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Um, the strong November is a, a result of that. Um, average order value um, was pretty flat um, year on year. So again, actually doing well to hold average order value, but it's going to be a continuing challenge for all of you. So you need to think of creative ways in which you can do that. And finally, there was growth growth in every in every um, every month year on year which is great the challenge you've got now is keeping that up which is quite a challenge but um, I'm sure business owners and and you you know the guys you guys in marketing will, will do a great job so that's me and thank you for listening I know it's quite a challenge listening to me for half an hour but hopefully you've taken some interesting stuff out there's loads in there and there'll be loads of questions I'm sure as the day goes on thank you very much